How are you today? Part four. And the subtitle, The Goliath Within. The Goliath Within. Number one, seek godly counsel. I know there are some people as they hear sermons that appears to be talking about them, they get angry. They say, why is the pastor talking about my case? Did anybody tell the pastor about my case? Uh, if you go to a church or to any gathering where the word of God is being preached and it's not talking about you, then you are in the wrong place. The word of God is meant to address your situation. You are meant to see yourself in the light of the word. And as you are hearing this message today, I'm believing God that you will hear God yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105. says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. In other words, whenever I hear your word, I receive revelation. I receive guidance. I receive instruction. Today, may you receive instruction in the mighty name of Jesus. So whatever may be the Goliath within that you are facing, please seek counsel. So that you will not struggle in vain. You will not pray in vain. You will not fast in vain. Some of you have been praying, fasting, You've just been believing God for progress and nothing seems to be moving. Why don't you pause and check? Is there a Goliath within? Is there something in your life that you need to address? That's the core message of today. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's not that God doesn't want you to make progress. It's because you are not acquiring knowledge. You are not seeking the counsel that will open the door to your progress. But as you hear the word today, the knowledge you need, the counsel that you need, may God release unto you in Jesus' name. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your own one of the ways to pro prevent yourself from making progress is to think that you have the answer. Oh, you know what to do. You can undo it. You can fix it. Since you have been trying to fix it, have you made progress? Say, so lean not on your own understanding. Seek counsel. You don't know it all. Look at the person next to you and say, you don't know it all. You don't have all the answer. Seek counsel. Proverbs 11 verse 14. Proverbs 11 verse 14. Put it on the screen. It says, where there is no counsel, the people fall. If you don't go and get counsel, if you don't seek counsel from the Lord, you don't seek counsel from the people of God, you don't seek counsel from those that God has surrounded you with. You are likely to fall. Where there is no counsel, the people, they fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is... Many years ago, now I remember I was, you know, in office. I went, I went out for lunch or something, and then all of a sudden, somebody called me, one of the members... Minister has called me and said, Pastor, I just want you to know I'm resigning. I'm leaving my job. Ah, you have another one? He said, no. You don't have another one. You are leaving this one. Have you thought about who will pay the school fees and things like that? Eventually, I managed to convince him to stay. Today, he's the managing director of the company. But for that conversation, it may have left. Where there is no counsel, the people for I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. The counsel that will direct your life to make progress, may you seek in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, obey the godly counsel. 
is wanting to be counseled, it's a different matter to follow the counsel. I have encountered also many people in my life. You counsel very directly, but they will still do what they want to do. I can give you a few examples. There were a couple that wanted to get married. And I, and I was saying to them, calm down. Calm down. Let's take this easy, one by little by little. Let's pray. Let's, oh, no, 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 Pastor, I, we, 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 we have to do this marriage. Uh, we need to do it quickly. We need, calm down. Why, what is the hurry? They didn't listen. They got married. The marriage did not last one year. It didn't last one year. I pray for you from the bottom of my heart. As you receive counsel, the grace to follow it, may God Almighty give unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. James 1.27 says, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. As you hear it, you recognize it, that this is what God wants you to do. Follow it. Not following the word of God will give you troubles. Proverbs 29 verse 1. Proverbs 29 verse 1. Let's put it on the screen very quickly. Say, he that is often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed without. Let me break that down. Because I know this is a word particularly for some of you. Say, so you've been hearing it. They've been advising you. They've been counseling you. you. You know you've been told. And yet you continue to harden your neck, to do what is wrong. The Bible says, suddenly shall be destroyed without remedy. <laughs> All eyes closed. You know you are the one God is talking about. You have been counseled. You, you've been told what to do. The right, you know the right thing to do and yet you continue to do the wrong thing. All eyes closed. You are the reason for today's sermon. God, God has located you. God has found the love of God has found you. Please lift up those, those hands wherever you are. you are. You are that person. God bless you, my sister. Keep it up very well. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. I can see many of you. You know, you know, but you keep finding yourself doing what that that thing that you know is wrong. Just lift up those hands. God bless you. Father, I commit into your loving hands your sons and your daughters. Let today, Lord, be the day that they will finally surrender to do your will. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not suddenly be destroyed. Your tomorrow will be all right. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number three, confront the Goliath within. Deal with your weakness before it deals with you. Deal with your weakness before it deals with you. Please pay attention. Sometimes we focus too much on the Goliath outside. Oh, the problem is my boss. The problem my in-laws, the problem, satanic attack, the problem. You look outside. But the Bible says, this time you point a finger. How many are pointing towards you? Uh, the Goliath within. Deal with your weakness before it deals with you. First Corinthians 9.27, which we read earlier on. It says, I put my body under. I bring it into subjection. And second passage on the screen, 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Say, let him that thinketh he stands, take heed, lest he falls. 
And you've been doing it night after night. Nothing has happened. I know you, you, you've been getting away with it. He that thinketh he stands, take heed, lest, lest he falls. I pray that by reason of today's sermon, the change that you need to make the, in your own life, you will make it and your life will make progress in the mighty name of Jesus. In every way that you have been tempting God, or you've been doing it and it appears nothing is going wrong, today you will cease from doing it in the mighty name of Jesus. What are some of the examples of the Goliath within? Number one, sexual immorality. And I'll give you examples of great people that God meant well for them. They were supposed to excel in life, but they failed and fell to the Goliath within. Samson. The Bible says Samson was born great. From the womb, the Holy Spirit was moving in him, right from the womb. The Bible talked about how Samson took the jawbone of an ass and killed a thousand Philistines. How Samson went to the city with his bare hands, pulled the gates of the city, and he carried the gates away with his bare hands. In Judges chapter 14, verse 5 to 6, he talked about how Samson, with his bare hands, killed the lion, tore the lion apart. He was born great. Prophesied to be great. But he died a prisoner, grinding corn in the prison. He did not fulfill destiny because he fell to the Goliath within. I pray for somebody here. You will fulfill destiny in any way that sexual immorality has continued in your life. Today, you will surrender it in the mighty name of Jesus. Judges 16, verse 19. Look at the story of Samson. Like I used to call him when I talk about this passage. Let's put it on the screen. Judges 16, verse 19. The Bible says this lady made Samson to sleep on a... Where? Samson was sleeping on the kneel of the, of the lady. Sammy boy, yes, baby. Samson boy, yes, baby. <laughs> They've been telling him, but each time they tell Samson, don't go near the women of this area. Samson will say, no, that's what I want. He kept on, kept on. Sammy boy, yes, baby. There are many that are still doing Sammy boy. There are many that are still doing yes, yes baby. It, it sounded like a joke. But gradually, the man that was born to be great died small, died in sorrow, in pain, and in shame. In verse 20 of this passage, as he was still lying down, enjoying the laps of a lady, they said to him, Sammy boy, the enemies have come. I said, don't worry about them. I will just go out like I normally do. I will take care of them. And the Bible said, he did not know that the Lord has left. There are many Christians that are nothing but walking corpses. You're still looking radiant. You believe all is well. But the Lord has left. I pray for somebody today. As you make your way back to the Lord, everything that you have lost, 
May God Almighty restore in Jesus' name. In any way that you are still struggling with adultery, struggling with fornication, struggling with masturbation, struggling with everything that is contending with your destiny, may God give you victory in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 to 7 says it very clearly. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 7. Know you not that your body is a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defy the temple of God, he will God destroy. May God not destroy you in Jesus' name. As you hear this sermon today, the change you need to make, may you make it in the mighty name of Jesus. But there was a, a man, one of the members of this church some time ago, he said he went to a place and they were preaching about alcohol. He said when he got home, he went in search of all the alcoholic bottles in his house. One by one, one by one, took them out, destroyed them all. That's what it means when you hear the word of God and you turn it into action. I pray one more time. Every change that you need to make as you hear this word, may God give you the grace to make it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number two, greed. Another Goliath within. Greed. I want more. I want money. I, me too, I want to happen. You, you want to happen. You really want to happen. There's nothing wrong with doing well, but don't do it at the expense of your, of your soul. Gehazi was a man that was destined to be extremely great. The Bible said Elijah had a servant called Elisha. When Elijah was going, he gave Elisha a double portion of his anointing. Now Elisha is the boss and he has a servant called Gehazi. The expectation is that when Elisha is going, he will give Gehazi a double portion of his own anointing so that Gehazi will have times for the anointing of Elijah. But Gehazi never fulfilled destiny because of greed. You know the story. In 2 Kings chapter 5, a leper called Naaman went to Elisha for healing. And Elisha, as led by God, healed the man. The man became brand new. His skin became brand new. And he said, Pastor, thank you so much. Take this gift. He brought money, he brought clothes, he brought all the good things. And the man said, no, 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 no. God has not asked me to take anything from thee. Go with your gift. Many of you don't even need anybody to ask you. They will not get anything until they say to you. Ask your neighbor, it that sounding like you, that started to sound like you. They said to Elisha, take. And said, no, I don't want. But some of you, you don't, they don't need to ask you. Nothing is going to happen. You are not going to do anything until they first said to you, you are the reason for this sermon. Elisha said, no, God has not asked me to take anything. But Gehazi went behind. The Bible said Gehazi went behind. He said, don't, don't mind that master. Don't, don't mind him. We need this money. We need all these clothes. We need all these things. Let us have it. He collected it all. And the Bible said he went and hid the money, hid the clothes somewhere. A man that was destined to be great. Let's go to verse 25 of Second Kings chapter 5. He came back. And the master asked him, Elisha said unto him, where are you coming from, Gehazi? And Gehazi said, I didn't go anywhere. I have been in the house. I have been here. I didn't go anywhere. 
He didn't go anywhere. Hear the answer of Elisha. This is for those of you who can't resist the temptation of money. You can't resist the temptation of just acquiring, acquiring, acquiring. Even when it's against your soul, you know the method by which you're acquiring is not right before God. You know it. He said, but everybody is doing it. It's your name, everybody. It's your name, everybody. And he said unto him, went not my eye with you? You think I didn't see you when you went to meet the man? And he turned back. Is this the time to receive money? Is this the time to receive garment? Is it the time to receive olive yards and vine yards and sheep and oxen? Verse 27. The story of Gehazi ended on a sad note. The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed for forever. Don't look for money at the expense of your destiny. Hello? A few times I have been tempted too. I remember recently somebody came to me and there was a transaction. He said, Pastor, uh, let us do two. We'll do one contract. You will have the correct price. We will do another one. You will have a different price. This price is the one we will show to the government. Say, ah, God forbid. God, God forbid. Others may do it, but you must never go near it. All eyes closed. You know this is your own Goliath. Please lift up the hand. I want to pray specially for you. you. Maybe you've been getting the money in a way that you yourself know is not right. Just lift up those hands. I want to pray for you. All eyes closed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, my brother. Lift it up very well. You, you know yourself. Others may do it, but not you. God bless you, my sister. Lift it up. Lift up that hand very well. All eyes closed, please. Father, I commit your sons and your daughters into your hands. From today, Father, the grace to resist anything that is not right, that is not coming in a rightful way, grant unto your sons and your daughters in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not pursue money, you will not pursue possession at the expense of your soul in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Another quick example on this one, great, before I move on. And I'll just paraphrase. We, we are running out of time. Israel was specially chosen by God to be great. And they defeated all the nations that were mighty that came against them. There was a small city called High. Small city called High. And they said, we don't even need to all go and fight. Right, let's just pick a few people. Let them just go and defeat that small city. We, we don't have time to go. They are too small for us. The Bible said the city of Ai defeated Israel. They, they came back running. Many of thousands of them killed. And Joshua went to God and said, how did we suffer this kind of defeat? Please follow me very well. They went from victory to defeat in the hands of a small city. I'll read this one and then I'll make the call. Please put it on the screen. Joshua chapter 7. Joshua said to God, God, why has all this been brought upon? Why did you bring us over from Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Isn't it better if you have left us where we were before? That's it. I will take my time to read it because that is a call I'm about to make. Oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs to their enemies? Keep going. 
For the Canaanites and the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and all the environs about, and cut off our name from the earth. What will thou do unto thy great name, Lord? Hear the answer of God. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get up, my friend. Joshua was praying, praying fervently. God said to him, Get up, my friend. Why are you lying down praying? Who are you praying to? Many people come to church and pray and pray when you have not dealt with the Goliath inside. Get up, Joshua. Get up. Who are you praying to? Verse 11. Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed, transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it among their own stuff. They've taken something that they should not take. Israel has taken something that it should not take, and they have added it to their own stuff. Finally, verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more. I'll read that again. Neither will I be with you any more except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. Black and white. Israel, you want to go forward? I won't be with you until you take, remove from among you what does not belong to you. The Holy Spirit said to me, some people are keeping what does not belong to them. I don't know what it is. But you know you are holding on to something that is not yours. All eyes closed. Maybe it's somebody's husband that you are messing around with. The man doesn't belong to you. Leave him alone. Maybe it's somebody's wife you are messing around with. She is not yours. Leave him alone. Maybe it's somebody's possession, money, or whatever it is. But you know it's not yours. God is saying, let it go. All eyes closed. I just want to pray for you. Wherever that may be. Just lift up that hand. I know it may be a struggle for you to release. But God is saying, let it go. It's not yours. All eyes closed. Just lift up that hand. Lift it all very well. Lift it all very well. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. Just lift it up very well. You know it's not yours. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Just lift it up. It's not yours. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Let it go. Just lift up that hand. Thank you. It's not yours. It's not yours. Let it go. Father, I thank you. All eyes closed, please. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Father, I commit your sons and your daughters into your loving hands. Whatever it is they are holding that is not theirs, as they release today, everything that they have lost, Father, please restore in the mighty name of Jesus. The progress that has been suspended, Father, please restore in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let me round up. I'll continue in part five when we have that time. I'll skip example three and example four, and I'll round up with the last one, anger. Hunger. 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 The Goliath within. The Goliath within. James chapter one, verse 19 to 20. James 1, 19 to 20. It says, be swift to hear. Be slow 
to speak, be slow to wrath. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Anytime that you are angry, you cannot do what is right. Hello? Let me repeat that. Say, the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. The anger of man walketh not the righteousness of God. When you are under the anointing of anger, you cannot do what is right. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9 says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. When you see an angry person, you are seeing a fool. It may sound harsh, but the reality is anger is acid that destroys its container. The fastest way for the enemy to destroy you is to make you angry. Hello? One of the fastest ways for the enemy to cause you to destroy yourself is to make you angry. Because once you are angry, you are out of control. I will show you a man anointed to be great. The Bible said God saw the suffering of his people after 400 years and decided to send a savior whose name was Moses. After 400 years of suffering, God said, I will send you a savior to deliver my people. Moses was born a savior. Why the other male children of Israel were killed, God preserved him and engineered him to go into the palace. He started his life in the palace. Anointed supernaturally. But he had a Goliath within. He was not sensitive enough to deal with the Goliath. And he ended on a sad note. Many of you may have the anointing of anger. You may not understand that that is a satanic anointing. Say, but the person is annoying me. Yes, the person is annoying you. But anger is a choice. Hello? Anger is... Let's say it again. Anger is... It's a choice. You can choose to be angry. And you can choose to look away. Anger is a choice. When you choose to look away, it's not because of the person that has offended you. It's because of who? Because of yourself. Moses, the great man of God, the first instance of anger turned him into a murderer. You will have thought this man will learn, right? He saw the Egyptian quarreling with the Hebrew before long. He had committed murder. One day, if God leads, leads me, maybe I'll bring the sermon back that I preached many, many years ago. Anger is, is madness. And I'll show you examples of people that destroyed their lives just within a brief moment of anger. Anger sent Moses into exile for 40 years of his life. He still did not recognize that this is the Goliath within. Many of you are playing with fire. 
Oh boy, he annoyed me. Oh, she annoyed me. When that anointing of anger comes, know that destruction is near. The grace to overcome it, may God give unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Numbers chapter 20, verse 8 to 12. The Bible said, they abused Moses. Moses, why did you bring us here? There is no water. You want to kill us. You want to kill our, our wives. You want to kill our children. Did Moses have a right to be hungry? Yes. He was being accused. He was going through the same problem they were going through. They turned against him. They were about to stone him. He had every reason to be angry. But he forgot that anger is madness. The Lord said unto him, Moses, don't worry. Don't worry about them. Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock and water will come. Moses opened his mind and said, you rebels, you stiff-necked people. Is that what God told him to say? You stiff-necked people, you don't listen. He took the rock and he struck the rock in anger. And God said, ah, sorry, Moses. You are not going anymore to the promised land. What he labored for 40 years. He spent 40 years in exile. He spent another 40 years to bring them out. 80 years in, at the age of 120. What he was born to accomplish, anger locked him out of it. Moses never stepped into the promised land. Let me leave you with these five words. Write it down, please. Anger brings self-destruction. Please write it down. When you can't control that anger, when you surrender to that anger, it will lead you to destroy yourself. You will use your own hands to destroy yourself. I was counseling somebody in the last two weeks. I said, can you see what has been happening to your life now? And I gave the person an example of four or five cases. I said, can you see now? Because you have refused to surrender this thing. See what you have done. One, two. Your life is gradually being destroyed by yourself. Anger is self-destruction. Number two, anger turns glory to shame. Anger turns glory to shame. Hey, but they offended me. Calm down. If you are not careful, that anger will turn glory to shame. Number three, anger turns joy to sorrow. What has been sweet before? What has been sweet before? Anger will turn it to sorrow. Many homes today that have gone into sorrow, trace it back. You will find anger at the root of it. Number four, anger makes things worse, not, not better. I can give you plenty of examples. Anger makes things worse, not better. And then finally, 
no forgiveness, no peace. There is no other way. No forgiveness, no peace. Say, Pastor, there is no peace in my marriage, there is no peace in my life, sorry. No forgiveness, no peace. I don't know what it is you have been going through, but God is saying to somebody here today, deal with anger before anger deals with you. Moses was born to take them to the promised land. He had all the power to work miracles. The Bible said he parted the Red Sea. He turned the river to blood. He called down frogs. He called down flies. But the Goliath within blocked him from ever seeing the promised land. All eyes closed. You are here today. I don't know what your own Goliath inside may be. Maybe sexual immorality, maybe greed, maybe anger, whatever it is. But except you have Jesus in your life, you will never be able to prevail over that giant Goliath within. So you are saying, Pastor, please pray for me. Pray with me. I need Jesus in my life to give me victory over the Goliath within. Please come, I want to pray for you first. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. Come, come. The choir will take the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, you will have the power to overcome. God bless you. Come. Come. To follow Jesus. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. Without him, you can do nothing. God bless you. Just keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Let's clap for them as they come. Say, come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Come. Come. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. Come, come. God bless you, my brother. Come. Come quickly. God bless you, my sister. Keep coming. God bless you, my brother. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Without Jesus, you cannot make it. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you, my brother. Come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you, my sister. Come, come, come. standing before you and preaching is a good example. Before I gave my life to Jesus, my life was a mess. I couldn't control myself. I was a wreck. But since I surrendered my life to Jesus, it's been a different story. Before then, it was a mess. So I want to recommend to you, stop struggling on your own. You need the power of Christ. Take that song one more time. Come, I want to pray for you. Jesus.
Jesus will give you the power to prevail. Come, come, come. Without Jesus, it will be tough. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For those of you that are out there, you had the voice of God to come for help. Until you surrender your life, you will struggle. That's why I give myself as an example. Before I became born again, I just could not help myself, especially in the area of immorality. But since I surrendered, it's been a different story. I've been married now 26 years. I can tell you the bed has been clean for 26 years. Would it have been possible without Christ? No. So I'll make the call one more time. You are here. You are still struggling with something and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. Please come now. I'll make that call. Take the song one more time. Jesus will help you. He will help you. Whatever it is that you are struggling with, it will help you. Come, come, come. I want to pray with you. As you surrender your life. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. For those of you that are already here, say after me, and those that are standing all, all over the world, you are joining us virtually, you are already also responding to this call, just stand wherever you are. You say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving my soul. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please rule over my life. Give me victory over the struggles that I face. I abandon the ways of sin. Help me, save me. Let it be well with me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please stand. You have been born again. You are already born again. But God has spoken directly to you today. There is perhaps a Goliath within that you need to deal with. It may be the sexual immorality. It may be greed. It may be anger. Whatever it is, you know there is an internal Goliath that you are contending with. As they take the song, I surrender all. Please come, I want to pray for you. You will finish well and you will finish strong. The enemy will not steal your destiny. Please come. And talk to God about that struggle. Talk to God about that internal Goliath, the Goliath within. Talk to him about it. Come, come. That internal Goliath, the Goliath within. You struggle, you struggle. You struggle with fornication. You struggle with adultery. You struggle with masturbation. You have taken what does not belong to you. You have taken what does not belong to you. You struggle with anger. Keep coming.
You are sitting there in the congregation and you know that you have something that doesn't belong to you. Like I said during the sermon, maybe it's somebody's husband that you are still messing around with. Maybe it's somebody's wife. Maybe it's somebody's property. Some, something that's not yours that you need to release. Please run to the front as well. Or you are struggling with anger. You know that is your own Goliath in, within. Please come, I want to pray for you. Come, come quickly. Let's take the song, guys. Surrender all. I'll wait for you for one more minute. Come, 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 come. that are in front, go ahead and just talk to the Lord concerning that thing that you are surrendering. Just talk to Him. You are joining us online. Talk to God about that thing that you are surrendering. Talk to God about it. Dear Lord, I surrender it. I surrender it. I surrender it. I refuse to endanger my destiny. I refuse to endanger my future. I surrender it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, I commit your sons and your daughters into your hands, O oh God. They have made a decision to surrender that which has been an obstacle to their progress. You know the case of everyone, Lord. From today, let them never return to that vomit in the mighty name of Jesus. And as they have surrendered it, O oh God, the progress that has been withheld, Father, release unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. You will finish well. You will finish strong. The enemy will not destroy your future. And you yourself will not use your hand to destroy your future. It is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name.